hello and welcome to one more video tutorial in this uh, tutorial what we are going to talk about is how how to determine the last digit of the given expression now the concept is pretty much simple once you are able to get to the fundamentals and that is what we are going to start with now suppose we have a single number it's not an expression it's just a single number say 36 um, I want to divide this number by 10 now why I'm choosing 10 is uh, you will just know in couple of minutes uh, 10 3 the 30 and you get 6 is a reminder this is what we call reminder and this is quotient quotient now let us choose uh, some another number let us say 40 and divided with 10 it's 10 for the 40 and reminder is 0 now did you observe one thing uh, the reminder over here the reminder over here and the unit place are same same goes here also the reminder and the unit place are same so what we can conclude over here is whenever you divide any number or any expression with 10 the final reminder would be same as the unit place of the entire expression uh, once you understand this it becomes really easy to determine the reminder of any expression uh, let me show it to you now uh, say you have a number so you you have expression say um, 36 into 24 into 42 into 28 these are some random numbers that I have chosen to form an expression and you need to determine the last digit of the product now when you want to determine the last digit of the product what you actually need to do is to multiply all of them and then see what is the last digit but the problem with that method is it's always going to take long time and it would be least efficient so we need to see uh, we need to have some shorter method that is more efficient and quick and today I'm going to teach you how to do that. So this is the expression. Simply divide the entire expression by 10. Now replace each number with the reminder which will be obtained when you divide that particular number by 10. Say 36 divided by 10 will give the reminder as 6. 24 divided by 10 will give the reminder as 4. 42 divided by 10 will give the reminder as 2 28 divided by 10 will give the reminder as 8 and this will again be further divided by 10 now this step how can we write this this is in accordance with the reminder theorem reminder theorem what is reminder theorem the reminder theorem states that you can always replace a number you can always replace number in numerator with its reminder uh, so that you can obtain the final reminder and there is an entire dedicated lecture on reminder theorem and currently I can't discuss all the nitty gritties of reminder theorem but one thing I want to tell you is this is not equal to this these values are not equal we are simply uh, using this as a method to obtain the reminder it is complete logic based thing you you just can't write equal to sign all you can say is uh, these are some different steps they are not equal in value because if you will multiply 6 into 4 into 2 into 8 by 10 and if you will multiply these divided by 10 the value is not going to be same so don't think that both of them are equal no they are not equal they were never mean to be equal we just want the last digit or we just need some part of reminder and that's why you are using this uh, reminder theorem now let us proceed further 6 uh, to the we are multiplying this and this sorry we are multiplying this and this and we are multiplying this and this now 
don't get confused by why I'm multiplying this and this. You can multiply this too also. Any way you can do. 6 to the 12 and 8 to the 16 8 for the 32 and this would be 32. Upon 10, again both will give 2 as a reminder and 2 as a reminder. Upon 10, again I'm telling you we can't write equal to sign over here. We have to write some other sign. This sign actually means implies but what I am trying to indicate is this. This is a step and this is also a step. You just can't write equal to sign. Now it will be uh, 4 by 10 and which will finally lead us with 4 as a reminder or 4 as a unit place. Now what if we, were, we would have multiplied this to 24 into 16 by 10 which would further lead to uh, 4 into 6 by 10 and which will further lead 24 by 10 which will lead to 4 both are same both are going to be same it's always going to happen that way so you can choose any two number even you can choose 8 and 6 and 4 and 2 to any way you can do or even you can multiply or all of them and see what is the remainder but it's a bit long winded process again so uh, that is it now how can you apply this in an even easier manner you don't need to write this upon 10 upon 10 every time so there is one more thing you could do. Simply think it in this way. Don't see them as end numbers. All only choose the units place. Okay. Now six four the it will be twenty four. Choose four four to the eight. Choose eight 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 the sixty four four, which is our final answer. Let us explain this again. See. 6 for the only considered unit place. 6 for the 24. Only choose 4. 4 to the 8. That is only digit. And 8 is the 64. Choose the unit digit. This is always going to be the unit digit of the entire product. Now, why this is going to happen is because whenever you multiply in two numbers, say 12 into 13, 3 to the 6, 3 1 the 3. Then you put 0 over here. You put 0. Then, so it means that multiplication of this two the number is always going to come down over here the final answer because this point is zero so accordingly this is always going to happen and you will always get the unit place pretty much easily the, so this is one of the methods that you can employ next one important observation that you should always see when you're trying to get the unit digit is the presence of five or any other multiple of five Suppose you have a number say, you want to determine the last digit of an expression say uh, 25 into 36 into 24 into some blah 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 whatever may, it may be. But as soon as you see that there is a multiple of 5 and there is one even number that is a multiple of 2, be assured that last digit is always going to be 0. Now there is one more tutorial on determining how many zeros would be there at the end of the expression and there, are, there I explain this concept in extreme detail but over here I can just tell you that whenever 1 5 and 1 2 combines together they form 1 0 because of the formation of 10 so here it, there, at last there would, there would be two zeros and then there will be an entire number that is because here there will be two fives and there are plenty of twos in 36 as well as 24 to form two zeros. Okay, now so first thing you should see is if there is any exp in the expression, if there is any multiple of five, if the multiple of five is present, then try to look for um, multiple of two or even numbers. If you can't find any, then the end number would be five. If you can find some, the end number would be zero. And if you don't have any multiple of 5, you need to follow the method that I just explained um, before this uh, zero things, that is 5 thing. Uh, that was all about uh, determining the last digit of the expression. And thank you.